Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be presenting you our official spring forecast for the year of 2020. Now, before I get started with this very exciting video, I'd like to ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social medias. Today's question of the day is going to be, how do you want this spring to go? Do you want it to be more wet, more dry, more cold, or more warm? Let me know down below, and I will be featuring my favorite comment in tomorrow's video at the end of it. Let's get right into things. So we're going to be starting out with our precipitation forecast. So we're going to be starting with that below average precipitation. So we're talking about the West Coast first things first. Uh, and we're going to have some slightly below average precipitation for these regions. The Northern Rockies through into Washington State, down through Oregon, and down through California and portions of Nevada as well. On paper, this will be below average, but it might not be too noticeable for a lot of these regions. Let's get into that second layer of below average precipitation. And this is also going to be for California, Oregon, and Washington. This is where it's going to be a little bit more moderately below average precipitation. So these are areas where you could expect it to be a little bit more dry than the surrounding tan areas. We also have an above average precipitation region out east for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and the Dakotas. And anywhere to the east of there, we're going to be dealing with some slightly above average precipitation for all of these regions in the central and eastern United States. Now, we're about to get into our moderately above average precipitation regions where we could expect even more precipitation. And then we're going to go ahead and get into our temperature forecast. So here's our moderately above average precipitation region and you can see that it actually covers a big area now throughout the winter the gulf moisture has been winning out the warmth and the moisture from the gulf has been winning in the eastern united states and i expect a lot of that to continue into the spring months march april and may and what we're going to be dealing with is a lot of moisture and a lot of warmth there for texas louisiana mississippi alabama georgia and even up into some of the surrounding states as well and I expect this is going to lead to some above average thunderstorms and maybe even some above average severe weather. Actually, our severe weather forecast is coming up after the temperature forecast, so make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Let's go ahead and start getting into our temperature forecast here. And we can see some warmer than normal temperatures are expected for the western United States, the eastern United States, and a little bit of the south central United States as well. Kind of making a horseshoe shape here. I expect that we will have a kind of south versus north here type temperature pattern, which we see that a lot where we'll see some warmer than normal conditions to the south and colder than normal conditions to the north. Uh, sometimes it's opposite. It just really depends. But definitely the southwest and the southeast are going to be the warmest out of any of these regions. We're about to get into where we could see some moderately above average temperatures. And I actually have two different regions to show you here of moderately above average temperatures. And this is where we could expect some very warm conditions over the spring months. All right, so our first moderately above average temperature region here is going to be for the deep south and the southeastern United States, maybe even a bit of the south central United States here. It's going to extend from Texas all the way up through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and into the Carolinas, but as well as Florida there. We're all going to be expecting some moderately above average temperatures. And what do I think this means for the springtime months? Well, I think that late April into May, we could definitely get into some temperature periods where it feels a lot like summertime. I remember years past, we've definitely had a lot of patterns set up like that, what I just said. And I also think that by May, we could be dealing with June type temperatures. So, I mean, we're really just going to be one month ahead the entire springtime, I think. Uh, definitely an early start to spring. We're going to start seeing some warm weather already for March for a lot of these regions. So definitely... Uh, one month ahead always uh, throughout the spring is pretty much what I'm calling for. In March, it's going to feel like April. In April, it's going to feel like May, uh, that type of deal. We also have a second area of moderately above average temperatures here, and this is going to be for Arizona, Utah, even in through southwestern Colorado, and then the very western regions of New Mexico. I think we will be dealing with some moderately above average temperatures for these regions as well. And again, same story. I think these regions could feel a lot like summertime for the, these areas already by the time we're reaching late April into May. I think we're just going to be one step ahead of the temperature pattern. And it's really just going to start to get summer-like very, very early on is what I'm thinking at this point. 
All right, now we're about to get into that below average temperature region, and then we're also gonna take a look at that severe weather forecast afterwards, and I'll also let you know what parameters and what factors I'm using to make that forecast as well once we get to it. All right, so here's your below average temperature regions. I do not think we will be seeing any moderately below average temperatures for any region, so it's just gonna be this first layer here. Uh, which is going to be slightly below normal temperatures there, I think, from Montana and through uh, just to the east of the Rockies, I think down into some of those central plains like Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, and then back up through the upper Midwest, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, as well as areas like Iowa are all going to be dealing with some slightly below average temperatures. Keep in mind, we do have the warm and cold separated by some of our biggest severe weather states like northern Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and through Missouri and northern Arkansas as well. That's going to be a very important factor in my severe weather forecast that's coming up right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that severe weather forecast. We're going to be dealing with some two different layers, and our first layer is going to be our above average severe weather region, obviously, but I think that this is just a general area uh, where I think there's a good chance you will see above average severe weather, but obviously not all of these areas will. It just de It's very dependent on different events that take place. But I think that the chance for above average severe weather is increased in these regions. The factors I'm using for this region is we're going to be dealing with some above average precipitation for all of these regions. To the south, we're going to be dealing with some warmer than normal conditions, which tells me we will probably have more thunderstorms overall, which then increases the chance of severe weather. Uh, let's go ahead and add that second region here. This is for Oklahoma, eastern Oklahoma especially, northern Texas just to the north of Dallas, I think most of Arkansas, the southern portions of Missouri, and through southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and then the very, very western regions of Kentucky and Tennessee. This is an area where I think we'll have the best chance to have above average severe weather. This is an area that's separated by the cold and the warm temperatures and also going to be dealing with moderately above average precipitation. That's just a recipe for a lot of severe weather. So I think that's going to be our most active region. And historically, it tends to be, but sometimes we see that go down to the deep south. I think that it's going to be a bit further north than the deep south this year. So I think we're going to be dealing with an old school, more western based severe weather uh, year this year. Now we're about to get into our overall forecast, which is going to be very, very exciting to present to you guys. It's going to be very telling. It's going to tell you guys a lot about what kind of conditions your region could be expecting from March until May. All right, now here it is. And for the West Coast of the United States, we're going to be dealing with some more dry than normal conditions there for that tan area. Just to your east there, we see that orange region, and that's where I'm expecting some warmer than normal conditions to take place. A lot of the southern four corner states, up through Nevada and even Idaho and a bit of Washington as well. Mountain snowfall out there for the Rockies, and that's quite typical actually. I think we could be dealing with some normal late season snowstorms out there. That's actually when the Rockies see some of most of their snow uh, march into April, and sometimes even into May we'll start to see snow as well. That little gray region there for eastern Colorado, a bit of Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico there is where I'm kind of expecting some average conditions. I couldn't really pick uh, a region to put those people in because it really just seems it's going to be very, very close to average. So that's what that gray area means. Up to your north, we're going to be dealing with some Arctic invasions. Not going to be very consistent, but I think we will see some late season, very cold air come in, especially March and April, May, that really starts to die down and we don't really see as much Arctic air come in. So I think March is the best chance. April, there's a pretty good chance. And then May, uh, we should see that fizzling out there. To your south, that's where we're going to be dealing with most severe weather or the highest chance of severe weather, that is. I think that that area is going to be dealing with the above average severe weather. All of those things coupled in is going to lead to most of the severe weather being bottled up within that red area. Above average thunderstorms to your south in the green area, we're going to be dealing with some above average temperatures and above average precipitation. Those things coupled together usually spells more uh, thunderstorms and maybe even more severe weather actually for that green area as well. Kind of a lime green region there. Warmer than normal there for the southeast coast in the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, we could be dealing with some more thunderstorms, but really we're only going to have slightly above average precipitation. So I think the most noticeable factor is going to be that it's just warmer than normal there for those regions. A bit to your north, a little colder early. I think March, you could try to hold on to a bit of winter, but really it's mostly the same as the yellow region there. 
Uh, just going to be a little bit later there for the more northern regions, obviously. And then some snow up there for the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains, White Mountains, and northern Maine. Again, that's very typical. I just wanted to remind everybody that we could see snowfall persist well into March and maybe a bit into April as well for those very northern New England regions. All right, now for your comment of the day. Rebecca Kahn said, negative 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside Fairbanks. By the way, our question of the day what was, was, what was your coldest temperature you've ever experienced? Uh, and she said that was in Alaska with her parents hunting caribou. Seems really, really interesting. Um, they had found a caribou. It's a, it's a long story, kind of, but it was in Fairbanks, and it was before 1971. I found that comment very interesting, and that's why I picked it as the comment of the day. Be sure to leave your comment for our question today, which again, if you needed a reminder, how do you want spring to go? Do you want it to be colder, warmer, wetter, drier? Let me know in the comments and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for watching the video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social medias, and I will see you guys in the next video.